Welcome to our podcast, It's About Payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and Walter William Duncan III. Whether you're new to the payroll game or a seasoned veteran, we have something for you. Put simply, you don't need to collect 100 invoices. You don't need to transfer 100 payments in whatever number of currencies, whatever number of payments methods. You have just one invoice, Transformify sits in the middle as agent of record, mitigating all compliance risk. Welcome back, folks. This is another episode of It's About Payroll, episode 87, right, Walt? Yes, episode How are you doing today, sir? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm excited to speak to our wonderful and amazing guest. I'm excited, man. I'm grateful for another day. How about you? I'm great. Yes, thank you for that. And Without any further ado, we have with us today, Lilia Stoyanov. Did I say that right? Absolutely. Oh, awesome. Lilia is a CEO and angel investor at Transformify, and she's going to teach us all about what problems she solves today. Without any further ado, welcome to the show. And what we ask everyone always first is, how did you get into payroll? Accidentally. (laughs) Absolutely, (laughs) absolutely, (laughs) and I'm very honest about it. First of all, my background is all about fintech, fintech and payments. And when I started building a new business and investing into it, my big question was, how do I entice people to use this product? There are so many fintech companies out there offering you e-wallets, cards, you name it. How do you differentiate this product from all the rest and make these people want it and stay with it? Yeah. And somehow it came to my mind that if you give these people something they need and what they need is something that helps them earn more money, <laughs> then you have them. And this was long before COVID. At the time, digital nomads and working remotely from various places was still very exotic. So people loved it, loved the idea. Of course, it was really hard to sell to corporates and to companies in general. We are talking back 2015 when the company started. Wow. But it was super exciting. Building something new as a concept especially talking to people who want to be financially independent, but also they wanted to travel the world. They wanted to live their lives, not to be locked in a cubicle somewhere. So that's how I ended up with payroll. And that's why I say accidentally, because obviously the moment you give them a job, and they're independent contractors, it becomes payroll on demand because their services are on demand. And that's the answer to your question. This episode is presented by Time Track Go, the simply better employee time clock software that is going to make your life easier. In addition to the unique graphical employee time card that helps you quickly identify and fix mistakes, Time Track Go is excited to announce it's now compatible with QuickBooks Desktop, providing effortless data transfer and reduced errors. Time Track Go will not only save you time and money each week, but the easy to understand user interface and the ability to turn an ordinary tablet into an employee time clock will get you and your team up and going in just minutes. Find out what a simply better solution can do for your business. To learn more and sign up for your 14 day free trial, go to www.timetrackgo.com. That's T I M E T R A K Go.com or call 888-321-9922. Let's go. Yes, absolutely. And what does payroll on demand really mean? How does that even work? If you provide your services on demand, and these are people that are either self-employed, they decided to start a legal entity of their own, they already have an idea. Either it is a side hustle because they want to repay their student debt or they have a mortgage and nine to five doesn't help much paying the mortgage, the school tuition, whatever else they have to pay. So they need more. It could be just something that is supplementing your nine to five income 
but for many people they start like that they see that they can build a business of their own and they start doing consulting or rendering their services as their mainstream of income so at that point in time you need to give them a way to first of all do their job render the services or it could be something else it's not necessarily online usually when you say you build a business these days people believe it needs to be remote not necessarily you could be a plumber you could be an electrician there is yep. a very high demand for those services believe me yep. and yep. at the same time you are owning your legal entity you registered to self-employed but it's definitely not your job to deal with issuing invoices making sure that those invoices are tax compliant making sure that whoever needs to pay you pays you timely this is precisely what payroll on demand is it's automation of all processes from beginning till the end starting with compliance signing agreements electronically automatically issuing invoices automatically transferring payments oh, especially wow. when it comes to cross-border payments in various currencies i don't know where in the world you are but imagine you're in brazil and you provide marketing services to some company based in the us obviously the company in the us would love to pay in us dollars they collect their own revenue in us dollars they don't want to really exchange into brazilian real but you're really used to fix in brazil the local payment method which works quite well with brazilian real not with us dollars obviously it's brazil after all Yep. So you definitely need a way to give people what they want to support their payment methods and to make sure that they're paid in the right currency. So it's automated. Otherwise, if you run a business, let's say in the US, do you want to deal with all this? Obviously, you want to hire the right people. It doesn't matter the location. That's yep. what everyone is doing these days. Talent matters more than location. Mm, but at like the same that. time, your business is marketing your business as a marketing agency is not to support multiple payment methods collecting voices from all the people you work with across the globe make sure those invoices are tax compliant they're correct and then good luck with exchanging into any currency because you have one in brazil another one in mexico a third one let's say in india a fourth one in the uk all these are different currencies different payment methods it's as a marketing agency it's a waste of your valuable time you can sell more you can make more money admin work is something that should and needs to be automated so yeah that's a lot so what i want to what i want to start with is i love that statement you said talent matters more than location i love that now does I'm I'm getting the service from you. Do I just click a button? Everything's automatic, but what bring us in a little deeper on how it works, some like how the steps happen. You I know you said you you set up the contract, everything is agreed upon and it's all automated, but what triggers the payment, right? How do you get to approve the payment before it's paid out or you pre-approve you know what I mean? You are absolutely right guessing click a button. Imagine you run a business and you need to pay a hundred freelancers. What you do, first of all, you upload one file with those 100 people. Imagine 100 people getting an email your data privacy compliant account with transformify has been created please log in usually if you don't have as a business they invoice details you don't know what payment method they prefer you don't have let's say their bank details if they ought to be paid by a bank transfer you may simply wait for them it's a single action they need to provide their invoice details they need to choose a payment method out of money 
we support a growing number of payment methods across the board. And that's it. The moment you upload those payments, the very first time you do it, these people automatically have their accounts ready. They're populated with all the information you have provided. The payments are created at the very same time. You go through the payments, you validate them. And usually we say, please adhere to four eye checks. One person is creating payments, a second person is validating them. Once those payments are approved and validated, what happens is automatically the invoices, they're called self-billing because we issue these invoices on behalf of the freelancers and service providers. We don't expect them to do anything. Those invoices are automatically issued the moment you click approve. On the other hand, one invoice is issued for all 100 payments you created. It's an invoice from Transformify to you as a marketing agency. Put simply, you don't need to collect 100 invoices. You don't need to transfer 100 payments in whatever number of currencies, whatever number of payment methods. You have just one invoice, Transformify sits in the middle as agent of record, mitigating all compliance risk. You pay to Transformify, let's say you transfer 1 million for those 100 payments. And you can opt to pay in whatever currency you collect your own revenue in, so you don't have unnecessary exchanges. And after that, it's our responsibility to disburse all these payments in the necessary currency, observing the preferred payment methods. So it's fully automated. Even the creation of those data privacy compliant accounts for the service providers and freelancers happens automatically. We want people to be really comfortable that no extra work and effort is required on their end. Gotcha. Before we continue, we'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to connect with us and to stay engaged with the It's About Payroll community. If you want to be the first to know when we drop new episodes, hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcast app and don't forget to share with your friends and family. If you enjoy more exclusive content, head to itsaboutpayroll.io. We've got three new exciting shows for you. It's about your paycheck, which caters to the employee. Safe Talk, which is a safe space for professionals like you and myself to have those tough conversations. And the News Pod, which we keep you informed and updated on the latest happenings in the world of payroll, finance, HR. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Now let's jump back in and discover the power of payroll. That's amazing. Now you you said something that the how, how do you what what about the the exchange rates? What if the, the dollar amount change and you need to pay more to cover the 100 invoices? Does the payer, does it just pull more money out or does it, how does that work? Normally, what we do is every 15 minutes, we pull the exchange rate and it's the exchange rate against any currency pair. So let's say you opted to pay in US dollars at the same time, we need to transfer payouts to the freelancers in whatever number of currencies because they opted to be paid in their local currencies. Yep. At that point in time, we collect US dollars and we convert that amount into the local currency automatically. Usually, it's the payment providers we have API integrations with that take care of all those conversions, making sure that U.S. dollars are converted into any local currency applying the correct exchange rate all the time. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Bill, yeah, do you have a target, like a company size that you like, that works best, that fits well? I would say our target are companies that have at least 250 employees, freelancers, contractors, because we have a variety of modules and there are some modules that are used to manage your entire team. 
they could be also on payroll employees, not just freelancers and contractors. We have HR MS module, which helps you manage the entire team, sign agreements with them, run assessments and the like. The bare minimum is 250 if it is considered from the point of view of our sales team and marketing team. But if you have fewer than that and you knock on our door, believe me, we won't turn you down. We'll usually listen to you. We'll ask you what really you need. And if we believe that any functionality we offer will help you sort out any issues on your end, we'll be more than happy to onboard you and to work with you as your business grows. But ideally, I would say, would be targeting companies that are between 250 to 5,000 people. Nice. Wow. Oh, so you have a limit at 5,000? No, of course, we deal with enterprises all the time. Okay. But if we consider that size, it's ideal from a different point of view. Usually companies that have more than 5,000 people have very complex processes when it comes to signing agreements, onboarding new vendors and the like. So signing an agreement with an enterprise might take six plus months. Gotcha. While signing a company that has between 3,000 and 5,000 usually is about a month. So that's why we believe that our sweet spot is somewhere between 250 to 5,000. Very good. That's awesome. Uh, can I use it if only in the U.S. or does it have to be cross-border or can I use it if I wanted to just use it in the U.S. or in one country? You can use it regardless of whether your team is based in just one country or you have people across 184 countries. At the moment, we have freelancers, independent contractors across the globe. The only countries we don't cover are those that are on a sanctioned list. At the moment, there are just seven of them. So apart from that, we have the capability to automate the processes, transfer payments, et cetera, across all these countries. And it really doesn't matter if you're in the U.S. and your team is locally in the U.S. or you have a mix of people locally or cross borders. It works equally well. The only, I would say, limitation in this case is if you want all these people to be using their own languages, in such case, it may take us time to have localization in whatever language you need. It's a matter of agreement between the parties. Our standard version, the vanilla version is always in English and the support is in English as well. Amazing, amazing. Could you speak to some of the common challenges? There have been many, believe me. <laughs> Since the very beginning, it was super hard to convince companies that remote working and working specifically with freelancers, independent contractors across borders is something that adds value to them. It was like that till COVID. Most businesses complain about COVID. In our case, it simply shifted the mindset of everyone making it extremely easy for us to explain, okay, this is the value added there. And at the moment you have no other choice. Everyone is at home and you need a way to find these people, manage them. So till 2019, the biggest challenge was to explain the concept and to really convince people in the added value. After that, the challenge became mostly the very, very fast moving environment. There are two wars at the moment, one in Israel, another one in Ukraine. There is a recession, there is super high inflation across the globe in most countries. And this is happening in the span of two, three years. It's unprecedented. Usually this happens, but it doesn't happen in such a short period of time. So now the biggest challenge is to always adjust because our business is growing super fast. We can't complain. We don't have the right to. For this year, we 
project and probably will exceed it. It is 250% profit and revenue growth. There are very few businesses that could say that. But at the same time, it's very hard to understand all those businesses, our business customers, what do they need? Now they face challenges. They need to cut their own costs. Of course, when cutting costs, they're cutting anything that is not absolutely necessary. It's normal. That's why. So we need to make sure that what we offer to them is their bread and butter they can't live without. And that's not easy. It's not easy to understand. We serve many industries across borders, plus changing legislation, plus whatever else that's happening there. It's uh, definitely not easy. Definitely not easy to understand what is the necessity at any given moment. Wow. Well, Amazing. For sharing that, yeah. Do you know where your number, like your concentration is of customers and location and industry? I'm interested. What indus- what's the biggest industry you serve and what's the biggest country you serve? Or the most, not biggest, but pop volume. Industry-wise, and it's always the industry that leads in our way. Because you have multinational companies and they may have their headquarters somewhere for whatever the reason might be. It could be the tax regime. It could be the licensing regime in a particular country. A variety of reasons. The legislation locally also could be anticipating those countries to incorporate in a particular country. But looking at the variety of industries there are industries that predominantly use the services of independent contractors and freelancers due to seasonality due to the fact that they work on a project basis one is careers on demand many career companies these days cannot afford due to the changing demand for their services and seasonality as well they can't afford to have everyone on payroll. There are peaks and downs all the time. For that reason, they always have a core team, which is 20 to 50%, depending on the business and the country. Everyone else tends to be on demand. Same with food delivery companies. Their riders, as they call them, they're off payroll, almost 100% of them. Then you have agriculture due to seasonality. You don't pick strawberries year-round, do you? No. Same about apples, same about mangoes, whatever else is there. Again, due to seasonality, they have lots of people that are temporary workers. They're usually independent contractors. They're hired for a specific period of time. Then you have FMCG, the same. They have seasonality and it's driven by demand, holidays. Now it's Christmas. You can imagine everyone asking for chocolate Santa Claus and the like. But yeah. it's those two weeks. After yeah. that, you don't necessarily need so many people engaged in that production process. Then you have industries that work on a project basis. And it has always been like that. You have marketing services. You have a software development services. Imagine today you need a videographer. Yep. Tomorrow you may need an editor. And after that, you potentially may need someone who's really good with AI cartoon creation. All this, because it's on a project basis, obviously would be a challenge if you keep them on pair all the time. It hits your bottom line and it hits it hard. You can't be profitable or your profit margin becomes super thin. For that reason, again, you have a mix of core people that are on payroll and everyone else is on demand. You have outsourcing. The outsourcing industry is big. Another one that may not come to your mind is translation agencies. Mm. Some of them have 20,000 plus, and all of them are freelance editors, copywriters, translators. Because today you may need someone who is really well 
versed and knowledgeable and could write a product description for pharmaceuticals industry in Japanese. But tomorrow you need someone who is really proficient in Korean. And you can't keep them on payroll. There are 20, 30,000 of them, especially some of our biggest customers, they may have a lot. And they need to be able to sort them out. They need to be able to filter them out, to always find the right person based on the project that's coming in. Wow. Wow. I think you I think this is the most efficient interview that we've ever done. You right? Yes. You just you're so well versed and knowledgeable about this. And as you should be, right? You're the CEO and you know your business. You're the perfect example of knowing your business. And that is awesome. Now you're also a professor, is that right? Well, I started the interview with example of side hustles. To me, it's one of my side hustles and it started again accidentally. I was speaking at a big conference in Barcelona and after the lecture, a very nice man come forward and asked me, okay, you are really knowledgeable about fintech and the financial services industry. Would you like to come and join us? Because we would love to have professors that are not necessarily academics. We want people who have real life experience. That's what our students and my students are seasoned managers. They are usually 45, 50 plus. They have lots of experience. And they are at the moment tackling a particular problem, being it financial restructuring, being it business transformation, being it completely digitalizing their payment processes, whatever it might be. They have a real problem and they want a real life solution. They don't want theory. So that's how it started. And I have been a professor for already seven years and I love it. Wow. Yes. That is amazing. It's a dream of ours too to teach payroll at a collegiate level. So yeah. we always we always are interested to talk to professors and see how you got into it. That's amazing. That's awesome. Well, well yeah. now you may be attracting the attention of the right business school. Yeah. You never know who's <laughs> listening to all that. That's right. Yes. You're so efficient and effective. Is amazing and, and I, I really enjoyed this conversation and I hope that we can have you back again one day. I know you I know there's so much more there you could share with us. Oh absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Walt, before we um, go? If you could give us one party note for anyone who's coming up in the business, fintech, payroll, what's one piece of advice that you would give to everyone out there? Don't be discouraged. In our industry, everything changes all the time. And if this discourages you because you believe that you know it and out of a sudden you find out that you don't necessarily know or think about it, that's why. Just keep learning. That's it. That's what the opportunity. If nothing changes, there is no opportunity out there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. As we near the end of this episode, we like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to you for listening. Before we sign off, here are a couple of quick things. Don't forget to follow It's About Payroll on LinkedIn and It's About Your Paycheck on Facebook and TikTok. We love engaging with our audience and you'll be able to receive exclusive updates and behind the scenes content. Thank you for being a part of our payroll community and thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going. Thank you very much. Lilia, thank you so much again for joining us. You've been an amazing guest. Yes. And folks, please go and look Lilia up. And it is transformify.org. Transformify.org. There's many services out there. Um, yeah. Thank you again for being on the show today. And we look forward to having you back. It was all my pleasure. I would love to join you again. And I'm sure that we could really add value to everyone who's listening from completely different angle. Agreed. Agreed. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. And again, folks, Lilia Stoy Anov from Transformify. Thank you so much. 
Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to It's About Payroll. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going.